Before I got started here, I took the vise off my bench so that I have a flat top without any obstructions. I also stacked up a couple of pieces of better half inch plywood just to, you know, lengthen out my work surface here because the bench is kind of wide enough, but it's not long enough. And you really need to be able to clamp it down at the ends to make this door nice and flat. So first thing I got to do is attach this piece one inch in from the edge. And I'm just going to mark that with pencil on both ends and then run a bead of glue on there. And then I can fire in a few three quarter inch brads to hold it in place. Now what I'm doing is I'm just clamping it down to the plywood underneath to pull it down nice and flat. I want to have this uh, glue dry with the material in a flat position. That way it's more likely to stay that way. Now that I have this one on, I'm going to put on the uh, rails, I guess you could say. These are the styles, the vertical parts of the door. And the parts that go across are rails. And the bottom one here, since I'm trying to get a door out of one sheet, I've had to add a piece, you know, join two pieces together. And that's not a big deal because this is going to be painted. Obviously, if you're going to leave this one, you know, do a natural wood finish on this, you'd want to avoid something like that. But in my case, all of my doors are going to be painted, so it really doesn't matter. And you'll never see the joint there because it'll be glued up tight. And uh, I'll sand it nice and flush. So I get some glue on there, and glue on the end joint there, so that those are joined together. Line it up on the bottom, since this is the bottom rail. And once again, I'll fire in a few brads. When you're making the door yourself, there are a bunch of different ways you can make it, of course. You're not limited in, you know, how many panels or you could definitely just layer up three layers of half inch plywood to make it a solid one and a half inches thick. And you'll have, you know, a modern looking slab door that's very solid. But in my case, I'm going for a two panel door. And the general configuration for the two panel door is to have the center rail line up with where the lock is. And in a residential uh, unit in Canada, generally, in North America actually, the lock is centered at 36 inches above the finished floor. So I've measured up from the bottom of my door 35 and a half. That leaves about a half inch gap at the bottom, which is generally what you want. And I'll just glue it in place and fire in a few pins again. And then all I need to do is fasten the top one in exactly the same way, except flush with the top of the panel, and then put on the other style on the other side of the door. Once again, just using glue and a few pins. Okay, I got two more clamps and I'll clamp it down to the plywood underneath on this side over here. And there's one other thing that I can do at this point, but I'm not entirely positive about what I want here. And that's to add the trim to the inside panels here. Um, one option, of course, is just to leave it as it is. I mean, all you need to do is sand this plywood here fairly well. And you can just paint that, if you're painting it, of course, which I'm going to do. But I think I want to have something a little bit different here. The last door I made like this had an OG molding that I put in here. But this one, I, I want to have a more modern look. So I think what I'm going to do is create a bit of a reveal and just a block trim that goes in there. Something that's a half inch square but creates a little bit of a reveal right beside these styles and rails just to give it a little bit more dimension and a little bit more definition. 
It is the next day, and what I already did this morning was I came out and I flipped over the uh, door, and I added the strips to the other side. It's exactly like the, the other side I already did, so I didn't film any of that. What I'm going to do now, though, is I'm going to start making the piece that goes on each edge that finishes the door as far as the overall shape goes. Okay, to make that molding for the edge, once again, I'm going to do it the hard way. <laughs> I've got some uh, recycled 2x4s here that I'm going to use to do that with. So I'm not going to go through all of the steps I'm going to take to size this lumber, straighten it out and all that. Instead, I'll just more or less skip to the part where I cut it to fit in the edge because we've all seen this stuff done before. I got all of these strips cut for all of the doors that I'm going to make. It's really a good idea to cut those all at the same time so that you're doing the same operation over and over again and you wind up with exactly the same thing that you know works because you got everything set up for it. So these are basically in two pieces because I was using those old 2x4s and I thought the best strategy was to cut them in half first and then you know piece them together like this. I actually cut them on a 45 degree angle on the end like this and this is called a scarf joint and what that does is gives a little bit more glue area than a butt joint and also it's more it's less of a bust joint it's kind of in between a butt joint and long grain so it'll actually stick better. To fasten these in place I'm going to be using construction adhesive this time uh, mainly because it's got a longer open time also, I can put a bead on this part here of the T, or the leg of the T, I guess you could say, and then slip it in, and what it'll do is it'll smear right in there so that I get good coverage. Now, these are a snug fit in the joint, and they really don't need any clamps, but to make sure that they're fully in there and they don't slip out, I'm just going to fire in a couple of pins. Now, once again, when I'm driving in these pins, I'm paying attention to where I put them, I don't want to have pins anywhere where I'm going to be drilling or cutting. So I'm also not putting in a whole lot because it really doesn't need it. As you can see, I had to pound it in with the rubber mallet. Next, I'll put the other one on to complete this side, and then I'll move over to the other side and do that. And then the last thing I have to do on this side of the door is put that trim around the panels. Okay, I've got my first piece of trim cut. I just cut the miters on the miter saw and it fits in there nicely. And to fasten it in place, I'm going to use glue and pin nails. I've got the uh, one inch ones I was using for the edge taken out and I put in five eighths inch ones and that will give me plenty of depth. Before I put this on, what I want to do is I want to sand this edge here. This is the outside or the inside of the panel <laughs> edge and that shows so that has to be smooth. I've already sanded it with the machine sander but some areas didn't get hit so I'm just going to go over it again quickly with the block sander. And I'm also, while I'm doing it, knock the corner off here a little bit. And I could do all the strips at the same time but it's probably going to seem a lot less tedious if you do it like this. So get some glue and put it in the corner. It doesn't take a lot to hold this trim in so you don't have to load it in there so it's squeezing out all over the place. And then I'm going to fire in just two pins to hold it in place. So I'm just going to continue putting the rest of the trim on this side of the door. Then I'll flip it over and do the other side. And then for all intents and purposes, the door will be finished other than sanding and to install it. I already made a video on installing this type of door. And there's a link in the description to that if you want to go watch that. Or you can wait until I install this one because I'm going to make another installation video for this one.
shrugged your shoulders and I shrugged mine.